Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. There are some puzzles that have been with humans since the beginning of history, since before the earliest days of science, that are still no closer to a solution than they were hundreds of years ago. There appears to be nothing in the world more difficult to understand than the tool we use to understand the world, the mind. When we're alone, are we really alone? For some people, they're never really alone. There's a chorus of anomalous noises and disembodied voices that follows them, even interacts and communicates with them. Is this the crosstalk of neurocircus or the scratches and whispers of demons and guardian angels? Disease or somehow the echo of another dimension? Auditory hallucinations or false perceptions of sound involve the experience and sensation of words or noises that have no real origin in the outside world and are considered separate from the person's regular mental processes. For most, these symptoms are temporary and minor. What's interesting is auditory perceptual illusions are not that uncommon. Up to 10% of the general population have had the experience of hearing one's name called, especially during the twilight times of falling asleep or waking. However, for some, perhaps 1% of the population, these auditory hallucinations take on a pronounced role in their lives and can dominate their perception. For those affected, these phantom sounds fill their ears and voices without origin call their name, argue with them, threaten them, all from inside their mind. These symptoms often begin suddenly and can grow stronger over time. A common form of auditory hallucination involves hearing one or more speaking voices, and this may be associated with psychotic disorders, most notably schizophrenia. Auditory hallucinations or hearing voices is a common symptom in people living with schizophrenia. In fact, an estimated 70 to 80% of people with schizophrenia hear voices. Sometimes the voices are supportive and helpful, sometimes menacing. They can start off positive and take a turn. In the Western world, auditory hallucinatory phenomena are pathologized. The sufferer is examined, probed, the appropriate diagnostic box checked, and the patient is either locked up in an asylum or the mysterious phenomena is medicated into oblivion. Other places, the symptoms are treated very differently. The hallucinations are viewed more like a sacred calling. The condition and symptoms are instead managed. The otherworldly messages brought by the voices aren't discarded as meaningless. To some, this information is valuable data to be collected, tabulated, and considered carefully. Those affected by the voices are granted a special place in the social group, an analytical and advisory role. They are considered touched by a special form of insight. In some cultures, these people are the shamans. Here's a quote. The cracked mind of the schizophrenic may let in light which does not enter intact minds. By psychiatrist R.D. Lang. Tanya Lerman, a Stanford professor of anthropology, wrote in the British Journal of Psychiatry, the striking difference was that while many of the African and Indian subjects registered predominantly positive experiences with their voices, not one American did. Rather, the US subjects were more likely to report experiences as violent and hateful, and evidence of a sick condition. In the United States, the voices are harsher, and in African India, more benign. The new research suggests that voice hearing experiences are influenced by one's particular social and cultural environment. Here's a quote from Joseph Campbell from his book, Psychology of the Future. The psychotic drowns in the same waters in which the mystic swims with delight. Here's one from the great writer Philip K. Dick. What about the world of a schizophrenic? Maybe it's as real as our world. Maybe we cannot say that we are in touch with reality and he is not, but should instead say his reality is so different from ours that he can't explain his to us and we can't explain ours to him. The problem then is that if subjective worlds are experienced too differently, 
there occurs a breakdown in communication, and then there is the real illness. There's an interesting, somewhat related condition. Musical ear syndrome. It describes a condition seen in people who have hearing loss and subsequently develop auditory hallucinations. MES has also been associated with musical hallucinations, which is a complex form of auditory hallucination where an individual may experience music or sounds that are heard without an external source. And this is comparable to Charles Binet syndrome, where visual hallucinations are experienced by blind people. Then there is the noteworthy and infamous exploding head syndrome. This malady is certainly fascinating, but probably not worth quite so dramatic of a name. No heads have actually exploded as a result of this condition. The first recorded description of EHS was written by physician Silas Weir Mitchell in 1876. One of his patients was experiencing a sense of pistol shot or blow to the head. This was followed by the patient hearing strange, indiscernible sounds and voices. While there are other recorded instances of physicians describing exploding head syndrome throughout the 20th century, the term itself wasn't coined until 1988. Even though the first medical report was published in 1876, there were written records of exploding head syndrome going back as far as 1619, when French philosopher René Descartes reported being awakened by a thundering noise and flash of light during his infamous Night of Dreams. There's a paper titled, Did René Descartes Have Exploding Head Syndrome? published in the Journal of Clinical Sleep Medicine focusing on the French philosopher's reported auditory hallucinations on November 10, 1619. Descartes, described by many as the father of modern philosophy, suggested the voices and dreams he experienced were inspired by God and were of great significance in the subsequent development of his philosophical ideas. Descartes' experience meets the International Classification of Sleep Disorders, the third edition, ICSD-3, Diagnostic Criteria for Exploding Head Syndrome. A sudden loud noise in the head at the wake-sleep transition, causing abrupt awakening and a sense of fright, and not associated with significant complaints of pain. No one knows why exploding head syndrome occurs. Some speculate it has some connection to sudden movement in the middle ear or possibly a brief seizure. Some people believe these episodes are a consequence of extreme stress or fatigue. It is especially common to hear the voice of a loved one after their recent death. Auditory hallucinations can result from a wide variety of other causes, including high fevers and infections, such as encephalitis and meningitis, also Alzheimer's and other types of dementia. Research shows that 40 to 50% of patients diagnosed with Alzheimer's develop hallucinations in the later stages of the illness. Also, migraines. Auditory hallucinations can often occur with migraines and they can frequently feature human voices as one of the symptoms. Parkinson's disease. Patients are more likely to experience visual hallucinations with Parkinson's, but some patients hear things from the scenes that they're visualizing. Alcohol and drug abuse. And also side effects of medicines. A number of psychiatric medicines, sleeping pills, seizure medications can create this condition. And in some rare cases, antibiotics, particularly the sulfonamides, may contribute to auditory hallucinations. There is a pantheon of intellectual, philosophical, and artistic geniuses who both suffered and benefited from their experiences with auditory and other kinds of hallucinations. Moses, Muhammad, poet and artist William Blake, Sid Barrett of Pink Floyd, mathematician and inventor of game theory John Nash, Beach Boy, Brian Wilson, Joan of Arc, and Socrates of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. There is no such condition as schizophrenia, but the label is a social fact, and the social fact is a political event. This is also from psychiatrist R.D. Lang. It's strange that such complex hallucinations, rich sensations and experiences, could occur as a result of so many different conditions, diseases, and injuries the mind seems to gain additional functionality when it's not working properly. This is very different than what you would expect from a machine. Damage to the central processing unit of a computer doesn't grant it additional software capability. To me, these symptoms, these hallucinatory phenomena, 
don't seem like malfunctions or glitches. I think these symptoms hint to a deeper reality beyond routine experience. An invisible world just as real as this one. Thank you very much. I'm Chris Rankin, and this is Vanadium.